Hello and welcome back to Indie Rebel VFX, Hollywood effects without a Hollywood budget. Today I'm going to show you something really cool that I literally just figured out how to do this week, and that is using the card 3D node in Natron, and more importantly, being able to bring in 3D camera data and object data from Blender for use in our compositing. So let me show you kind of briefly, real quick, why we would do this and uh, what this is. So here I have a shot. This is a just a drone shot rising up above a city and let's say for fun or because it's what the shot requires I need to light this window on fire I need fire coming out and kind of you know coming up okay I have an actual like stock footage element of a window fire right it's here's the window and the fire shooting out and that's animated and that's all good what I need to do now is I need to track that into the shot now Usually, like if it was a building back here or here or here, something that's you know in the shot the entire time, I could either do a planar track, I could do a 2D point track, I have a lot of options. If I was a nuke, I could just 3D track the scene and throw a card into place right here on this window and call it good. But we know that Natron does not have a 3D workspace yet, uh, so how do we do this? Well, the option uh, that works out the best I found is Blender. Now, before we jump over there and I show you how this works, a little bit of history on here, the card 3D node in Nuke, my understanding is that it was first developed or used on Apollo 13 to do uh, some map paintings and, and throw stuff off in the distance to make it look like, you know, the 1960s era uh, Florida during the launches and stuff like that. So this is a an older technology and it's kind of a, a pseudo 3D. And so now we kind of have that inside of Natron, but you're not going to be able to manipulate stuff and view it in 3D. And I'll show you what that means as we go along. But let's go ahead and start off by first jumping into Blender. And I'm going to open up a shot that I've already tracked. It's the same shot. If I go to my camera view here, and uh, this is it. Let's go ahead and uh, come to the beginning. And then I'll just play through this. So while this is caching up, let's take a moment to talk about why a 3D track. How is a 3D track going to help us in a situation like this? We know that we could do this in Nuke and pin something right there. And that's honestly the benefit to it. With a 3D track, you don't need to have the object in the scene for the entire length of the shot. It can go out of frame because the camera is going to keep on doing what it's doing and it will continue the motion of what it is that it is uh, supposed to do. And if you have object data as well, we can also put something exactly into that location in the 3D scene. So if I bounce back to the beginning, we can see that I have tracked the shot. And more importantly, if we bounce over to the motion tracking tab, you can see that I have put a tracking marker very close to where my window is. Now I could have tracked this bottom corner of the window. However, that bottom corner is only on for 17 frames. Whereas these little circles that are up here, which is just above the window, is actually in the shot for about 34 frames. And thus I get more data to work with with my track. Now, if we look down here, we can see I have a very good solve error already of 0.59, right? That's fantastic. We can work with that. So what I want to do is actually go uh, with the tracker selected. I can go 3D markers to mesh. And what that does, if I come back to my default view, is, let's see, we'll kill this one for right now. We don't need that, is it creates an actual mesh object of all these track points that line up where our tracking markers are. If I tab into edit mode, you can see that these are all selectable now, right? Now, I only need one of them. I only need this one right here. If we go back to the camera view, we can see that's the one I want to keep. So let's go ahead and hit A to unselect that. And I'm going to just come through real quick and circle select the rest of these. Okay, these are all the ones I don't want. I can hit delete. And now I'm left with just one track point right there, right? Good. Now, there is one problem to it. Even though you can see I've got this tracks.001 selected, the origin point is way back over here behind the camera. And that's going to give us issues later on uh, when we go to throw this inside of Natron. So let's go ahead and with our track point selected, our, our mesh that we created from a track point, I should say, I'm going to come over to where it says set origin. And we're going to make that origin to geometry. And that now puts that origin, that pivot point, exactly onto that building right there, onto uh, right above that window. 
So now, this is really cool. Go up to File and User Preferences. Go to Add-ons and then type in Nuke. And we want to make sure that this is enabled. This is the Nuke animation format, which is a .chan file. So make sure that's enabled. And once it is, you can go File, Export, Nuke. I'm going to choose where I want to save this. In this case, I'm just going to stick this in my library drive. And you can see I've got one already called window null.chan. This is important down here. Pay attention to this. By default, it says make Y up, and the rotation order is XYZ. So just remember the alphabet, XYZ. That's going to be important later on, again, when we go back into Natron. So create a name for it. Choose where you want to save this file and hit export. I'm just going to cancel because I've already done this once. And now we're going to do the same thing for the camera. So I'm going to select the camera. I'm going to go File, Export, Nuke. Again, taking note of these, these should be exactly the same. Make Y up, rotation order XYZ. Choose where I want to save it, give it a name, and hit Export, Chan File. So now I've got two files created on my hard drive. One last thing though I want to do before I close out of Blender is I want to select the camera, go to my camera settings, and I want to take note of the focal length and my sensor size and we need both the height and the width. So in this case, um, because it was a drone shot, I find that drone shots don't track well in Blender when I punch this information in manually. I just let Blender guess it and the tracks always work out fine. Now if I shot on my Ursa Mini, I would fill in the focal length, I fill in the sensor data. But with the drones, let Blender guess it. It guessed a focal length of 24, sensor width of 35, and a height of 11.88. So write those down, we're gonna need those. If you can't find your sensor height, it's probably because this says auto right there and it only shows you one dimension. So choose horizontal and you can see that both of them appear right there. Cool. Now that we have everything we need, we've got two .chan files and we know what our camera data is. I can close out of Blender. I don't need to save my changes. And now we hop back into Natron. What I'm gonna do for the ease of showing you stuff is we're gonna add a checkerboard. And under this, I'm going to add a card 3D node. And again, like I said, these were, my understanding is first used for Apollo 13. So this is literally Hollywood style techniques from 20 something years ago. Uh, but it gets us by until we have a true 3D workspace. I'm going to make this panel bigger so we can take a look at all these settings and you guys can see what I'm going to change on here. We have three main areas. We have access, cam, and file. I'm going to come under cam and enable the camera and then drop down this file arrow. Make sure this says import format as Chan. You can also do Buju as well, but I'm showing you the Blender way. And I'm going to go find my camera.chan file and click open. After just a moment, the translation and rotation turns blue, showing me that they are keyframed and animation has been applied to the virtual camera. Now here you see rotation order. Remember we had that in Blender. This says ZXY. We're gonna make it XYZ so everything matches. Now there's one more setting we need to change but I'm going to do that momentarily. I wanna show you why that one setting is so, so important and to do that we need to bring in our object data. So I'm going to fold up the camera and now we have this file one down here. I'm gonna fold that down. Again, import format is Chan and I'm going to go find my window null chan file and open that up. After a moment, same deal as before, there's animation, change our rotation order to XYZ, and let's take a look at what we've got. So I've got my checkerboard, I've ran it through a card 3D, right? And theoretically, this should be somewhere where we can see it once we merge this all in. So let's add a merge, drop that in, yeah, yeah. Oops, I forgot to add a shuffle, that's okay. And I don't know where that checkerboard is, so let's just add a transform node, here it is. And now we can see that we've got a checkerboard right there. If I go back to the merge, and I drop the mix down so I can see this a little bit, let's go ahead and play the shot. Now, I don't need to play much in order to see that that checkerboard is slipping. Why is that? We have the camera data, we have the object data, 
why is that thing slipping? And this was giving me such a hard time yesterday at work when I was trying to figure this out. And I'm posting on the forums like, help, I can't get this. Well, there's one thing we forgot to do. If we go back into the card 3D and go back into the camera settings, there's an option down here called cam projection. If we drop that down, we can see that the focal length is way jacked up, as is the aperture size, horizontal and vertical. This is your sensor right here. So if I come into here and I kill this animation, we don't need animation on the focal length, it doesn't change, and we make that 24, and then I make this, if I could select them all here, Chris, there we go, 35, and the bottom one, 11.88. Now we have settings that actually match Blender. Come back to this transform, there we go. I've reset that, now I can put this back into the shot right here. Go back to frame one. And uh, if we play this through now, we can see that the checkerboard is matching perfectly. So theoretically, I should be able to put this fire on now and have everything match up. So let's go back to the beginning. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because I'm gonna need this here to see what I'm doing. We'll delete the transform, delete the checkerboard, and run our stock footage into that card 3D node. Okay, it appears right there. Completely large and ridiculous, that's okay. We wanna add a transform node above the card 3D. If you add the transform after the card 3D, it breaks the 3D. And I'm going to move this up to here. And because I wanna use this bottom corner of the window because I have a nice sharp edge here on my fire, if I press and hold control, I can actually drag that center point and stick that exactly where I want that to be. And now that becomes my pivot uh, as I begin to scale this and put this into place. So we drop this down to here, put it right over there. And if I scale it, we can see that that fits beautifully into there, just like that. And uh, this is really sloppy compositing, but the important thing to show you is the tracking that's gonna take place. So let's zoom out just a little bit so we can see what's going on and play the shot. So check that out, guys the window fire stays locked in perfectly to the window of the building everything's just beautiful even though the building leaves the frame there's no more tracking data on the building at that point and yet the fire just magically leaves it no keyframing we let the computer do all the, the hard work for us all we had to do is add a card 3d and change a few settings and now we've got 3d camera data and object data from blender inside of Natron. How cool is that? Like, this is just so awesome. This definitely makes up for the lack of a true 3D workspace in some regards. Now there's some things that we can't do. Like I can't just go through and start adding more objects. I literally have to go back to Blender, add another track point where I want to stick something, export the Chan file, bring that in as a new car 3D, use the same camera. I mean, it is a bit tedious, but the point is, is that it's the option is there and you're using free software to do it. Like I just, it's mind boggling to me. This is just so cool. So I hope you guys have enjoyed and learned something about how to use the card 3D node and uh, that it's, it's just, it's possible to bring in 3D data from Blender into Natron. So I'm L Director. This has been Indie Rebel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's something different about this that maybe you're doing that I'm missing um, that might make life a little bit easier. But uh, this works for me, and I just wanted to share it with you guys because I hadn't seen anybody else actually talk about this yet. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.